Alright guys, welcome to day 63 of Onshape. Look at this. I got sent an Onshape mug. How cool is that? Uh, some people from Onshape reached out and said, hey, will you uh, do some, thank you for all the stuff you've been doing with Onshape. Uh, will you allow us to send you some stuff? And I said, absolutely, this is tons of fun. Uh, this video series has been tons of fun. And I thought about what's the big fun I would like to make and at least just make a video over it. Maybe nothing too educational, but definitely a fun exercise to do would be to make a working U-joint. So let's go over to this assembly. I'm going to right click, hit animate, and hit play. And uh, it's just a good exercise. It's, it's looking at kind of the idea of if things are fully constrained by the mates we give them, we can create some interesting dynamics. So we kind of get stuck in this mindset of everything needs to be fastened and it really doesn't need to be. But before we do that, let's go ahead and make this part. So we'll click on sketch, or we'll click on, not the front plane, let's do the top plane. And right click, hit view normal two. And I'm just gonna do the base of one of my forks. And let's go ahead and just make this a dimension of 1.5 inches. Hit the green check mark, everything looks okay. I'm gonna go ahead and extrude that on up. With shift E for extrude, I kind of do that little shortcut uh, pretty frequently, uh, but the extrude button right here is up on the top left. I just, out of habit, I've kind of picked up these shortcuts and it really just makes my workflow work pretty quick. We're gonna make that cylinder about 1.5 inches and I'm just gonna go ahead and make my origin planes disappear for now. All right, we're gonna go sketch up on the top of our cylinder and I'm gonna hit R for rectangle. And let's put in a rectangle with a height of 1.5 inches and a width of, let's do 2.5. Mm. Yeah, let's do that. Now let's make it three inches. There we go. Okay, we're gonna hit Shift E for extrude. We're gonna bring all of those profiles up, but I'm gonna do it just a quarter inch. Everything's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and sketch on this top of this. We're gonna make our forks that are gonna stick out. So I'm gonna hit R for rectangle. Let's go ahead and do a, not a center point rectangle, but a corner rectangle. Let's do two corners on either side. Hit D for dimension. Let's have these forks only be a quarter inch. Hit the green check mark, and there we go. Hit Shift E for extrude. We're going to bring these up. Let's bring them up an inch and a half. Now let's do two inches. That looks a little better. Just make sure we get the clearance that we need when we make this. Now what you can do is kind of as a just a, a quick easy edit to make things look pretty, look things look nice. You can fill it or round off any of your edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it my fork here, and that radius is going to be uh, 0.75 because it's nice and rounded off. Now what you can do is you can also fill it inside edges and make this nice and pretty. And have your design look something a little bit more like you would find in a, an actual manufactured U-joint. So I'm gonna click on sketch. We're gonna go to this face now, hit view normal two. And we're gonna find the center of this fillet and put in a hole. Let's do that hole as a 0.5. No, that looks a little small. Let's do 0 0.75. There we go. Hit Shift E for extrude. And let's pull this all the way through. Make it a remove. And we've got our fork. 
That actually looks a whole lot better than the one I had before. Man, I wish I would have thought that earlier. We hit right click. We're going to rename this part. We're just going to call it fork. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if this actually works. Well, let me reactivate this sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to re-extrude that circle. And that circle is actually going to be our Look at that, that looks pretty good. But instead of a add, it's gonna be a new, because we want this to be our connector piece, we want it to be independent of, hit the green check mark, and things are looking good. So I'm gonna right click, let's rename this as connector. And I'm gonna make my fork disappear for now, because we're gonna make some edits to uh, our connector piece here. What I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna actually go back to my front plane, I'm going to right click, hit view normal 2, and I'm going to make a sketch on this plane. And we'll see why in a second. But I'm going to need an axis to rotate around. So all I've done was create a sketch on that front plane, draw a line straight up. That way I have an axis to rotate this connector around. What we're going to do is I'm going to click on circular pattern. We're going to click on our first connector piece and our axis is going to be that center rod right there. And that allows us to take our connector and rotate it and add it to this connector piece right here. That way I don't have to redo any sketches, I don't have to do anything else. I just take that part, that part, that body, rotate it 90 degrees and add it to it. And so if we make our connector inactive, the whole piece should disappear. And that's looking really good. Okay. The only thing we have to do now is add on to the bottom of our bodies here is because in the assembly, something needs to not move. Something has to be grounded. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to make a sketch on the bottom here. We're going to have to make a disc for our forks to sit on and to spin on, and the discs are actually not going to move. So let's do 0 0.5, and that looks pretty good. Man, I like that part. So we're going to go click on the plus sign, hit create new assembly, and we're going to insert everything in from Part Studio 2. We also need a couple of additional pieces. We're going to need another fork and another disc. Let's go back and fix that. Let's right click, edit, rename, and let's disk. Cool. Alrighty. I, I want you to get in the habit of naming your parts because when you go over here and do your assembly, if your parts aren't named, you can be spending forever trying to go back and forth. So anytime you make a new part, name it. It's just a good practice to have. Okay. Now let's go ahead and make some parts. I'm going to right click, we're going to take our disc, we're not going to want it to move, and then everything else is going to be built upon that disc. So I'm going to click on Revolute, we're going to Revolute the center of our fork to the center of this disc, hit the play, everything looks good. Hit the green check mark. It's going to automatically prompt us for our second Revolute, which is okay. We're going to want the center of our connector. Make the connector inactive. There we go. Parts are in the way of each other. Let's see if it will let me do it. Now it's got to be selected. Man, I hate it when it was that. All right, let's move this out of the way. Let's do it right. Revolute. If you noticed, when I was trying to select the pieces, it would select and deselect the same face just because those pieces are overlap. So what did I do? I moved it out of the way, just so that it's not in my way. All right, hit the play. Now, this is the preview of just these two parts interacting. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We just fixed that earlier. That this preview right here is only the interaction of those two parts. But since this bottom disc is fixed, it can't move. And so that means this fork can't rotate like the way it was just previewing, that means the connector has to move. 
So when I hit the green check mark now, we'll notice that the fork can rotate and the connector can rotate as expected. Okay. All right. Let's do a couple more and we're done. Revolute. Center of the port. Center there. Let's go ahead and flip that axis. Looks great. We can hit the play symbol if we really want to, and that rotates the direction I expect it to. And our last piece is going to be a revolute of this disc to this joint right here. It's overlapped, so we're going to flip the axis on that. Hit the green check mark. And now we're kind of done, folks. We're it. The only thing I have to do now is we can rotate our base plate any direction we want to. Well, let's, let's not rotate to where it's, things are overlapping. Okay. Deselect it and right click and hit fix. Now, what should happen is if I animate this, it should rotate as expected. And there we go, folks. We just made a U-joint that looks pretty daggone good. We edited the surfaces to it, so it looks more like a manufactured part and less of a rigid part. Um, but I thought this was just a fun thing to make, and I've really been itching my brain on making a video over it. If these videos have been helpful, please, please, please like and subscribe. It is tons of help. If you need help in any capacity, reach down in the comment section. I do respond to the helpful comments or people who kind of ask for things. Um, but in any case, I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.